Hey everybody, welcome back for another Heffy Doodle video. To, this is Cassie. Today we're going to be making a spring, like a new baby card, so let's talk about what we're going to be using. We're using this Excellent News stamp along with the die, and I love that this die, a couple of the dies will cut out around their feathers, and it's just so cool. We're also going to be using the Close the Gate die and the Build a Cabin die. We also have the Yay Heffy Cut. We have some alcohol marker friendly cardstock, some white cardstock, and of course, our mini die cutting machine. So let's jump right into what we're doing. I have a piece of cardstock that I've trimmed down for the word Yay, and I'm gonna run that through my three inch Xyron sticker maker. This just makes it a little easier to attach these together. And I do wanna cut it out three times, so I'm gonna peel off the front of that sticker and then what we're going to be left with is that cardstock that is attached to the sticker stuff. And when I take my die cuts out of there, they will have a sticker back, which is great. So it makes it easier to attach to each other and to um, the card front. So I'm going to do this three times. And then I'm going to set that off to the side because we're going to do some spraying. I went ahead to save some time. I die cut all of the pieces that I needed from my build a cabin and my close the gate dies. So there they are all cut out out of that white card stock. And I'm going to do some spraying with some distress oxides. I wanted this to be kind of subdued and springy. Um, so I'm using some different colors. We've got Tattered Rose to start. That's what I'm gonna spray on my Yay. It's also gonna be on a heart. The roof, we're gonna do it on the door jam and the steps of the door. Uh, and so I'm just gonna spray that all over. Keep in mind, this is not watercolor paper, so you wouldn't go, wanna go too crazy saturating, but I spritzed it a few times and then I'm gonna take some picked raspberry and splatter that all over that background. It looks like a hot mess right now, but when that dries back and I peel those away, it looks really cool. Because these are distress oxides, they are definitely going to dry back quite a bit and they'll be a little bit more subdued and have a chalky look to them, but it is really cool. Our next combination for the gate is antique linen and I'm gonna splatter that with some scattered straw. We're also going to do that same thing for our cabin, which we are going to use as a chicken coop. But I love the versatility of that build a cabin because it could be a cabin, it could be a beach house, it could be a dog house, or in my case, a chicken coop. For our door, we're going to spray that with some tumbled glass. I'm just going to leave it as that. And then I do have another piece of that cardstock that I am going to end up trimming down, but this is going to be my background. So I'm spraying that with some tumbled glass, if I can get it to spray, <laughs> just at the top. I'm going to splatter that with some faded jeans, just at the top. And then our bottom half for our grass is going to be some peeled paint. And this is just going to give a nice sky and grass background um, that I can trim down later. We're going to splatter that with some Lucky Clover, and then that's basically going to do it for all of our Distress Oxides. we got to let that stuff dry while we do our stamping. To save a little time, I went ahead and stamped already. I stamped that onto that Alcohol Marker Friendly cardstock, and I used uh, some Blackout Ink by Ink on 3, which is just a great alcohol marker combination. I'm using my Copics. I'm going to put those up on the screen for you, but I have discovered some fun springy colors for the chicks. I started with some Y00 and YR31 just for our chicks. For our little daddy, our rooster, he has the YR31 as his base. And then for the mom, and then like this little teenage rooster, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna call him, the teenage rooster over here, we did the YR31 as well. So I wanted them to be a little bit darker than our chicks. And then I'm gonna come in with some YR12 for our dad and then that's going to be the third darkest color for our chicks but the second darkest color on our older chickens. Uh, I tend to go lightest to darkest as you can tell but I know that there are other ways people tend to like to color sometimes darkest to lightest. I find even though I've been Copic coloring for over a decade now that's still kind of hard for me to do so I like to just go back to the basics which would be lightest to darkest. I find I don't quite use as much ink when I do it that way and for me it just gives a better blend. Everybody does it different so you know you do you color however it makes you happy. For the comb and the other parts of our little boy roosters we are using Y or RV14. 
because that's going to tie into the background. And then for our eggs, we're just doing a little bit of shadowing and shading on that with some B41 and some BG000. And now I did do dark to light there, but I left that egg mostly white. For our nest, we're doing E23, and then I'm going to do some flicking motions with that, and I'm not blending it out because I want it to look like straw. So we've got E25. And then when I'm done with these, I'm going to use the matching dies and run all that through my mini die cutting machine. Now it's time for a little assembly. I'm going to assemble this cabin, which is so cool. I love that it has so much versatility, like I was saying earlier. So we're attaching all the little pieces down. I have seen the design team over the last several months use this cabin for so many different purposes and I love that I'm getting the chance to use it as a chicken coop. So we're just assembling all the little pieces. It comes with all those. It even has like I cut out the heart. It has a bone. It also has like the little life preserver so you could have this as a little beach house. Um, but I'm going to use the heart because I thought that would be fun. Like love grows here. You know spring chickens. How fun. And then once that's assembled I've decided I wanted the gate to look a little bit darker and stand out a little bit differently. So I'm going to pull in some ground espresso distress ink. This is just regular distress ink and I'm going to blend that on the edges of our gate just so that it's not the exact same color. You can tell those distress oxide sprays really dried back quite a bit. So they're much more subtle. They're kind of chalky and uh, I think it gives a really neat effect. It's, it's so different than regular distress inks. And then I did cut it out twice because I do need the little picket fence part. I don't need the gate, so I'm not gonna worry about that as much, but I'm just gonna blend some more ink on that. And then I'll go ahead and blend on the gate just in case I decide to use it for something else later, but that's gonna do it. I'll attach down the pieces for the gate. So that is going to include these closures. I don't remember exactly what those are called, but that's where your gate with the hinges, that's where your gate would open. And then we've also got the little door handle for our gate. Attach that down, it just adds so much fun to that. And then I'm going to attach that down with some more of that liquid glue. You could use foam tape on this, but I'm gonna keep this a fairly flat card because there is a lot going on. And then I'll just attach down the fence the little picket fence part and then we'll trim off that excess door. We can use that like I said for another card or even on the inside of this card if we want to. And then next it's just going to be kind of deciding where we want things to go. I'm going to pull out yay each one one at a time and as I peel off the back I'll attach it to the next one. It's hard to see here but I'm only doing that so that it keeps its shape which yay is a very small word, so it's not like you have to worry about the shape changing a whole lot. But the nice thing about the sticker back is that it makes it really easy to attach. You also have a little bit of wiggle room when you are attaching it. So now that I look at this, I suppose it wasn't necessary for me to spray all of them, but since they were all attached, might as well. I won't attach yay to the card front yet because I do want to stamp out the word congratulations. I know I'm not saying that correctly, but if you look at the way it is, it stamps out, you're just going to be like, that's really clever because the word hatch is in there. <laughs> How cute is that? This makes for such a great little like new baby card or, um, you know, I, you're expecting or whatnot. It's just super cute. So I'm going to trim that down in my guillotine trimmer. And then now that I've figured out where I want that to be on my card, I'm going to go ahead and attach that down. None of the rest of the pieces are attached other than the gate. So now that I know where the, the sentiment is, now we can start attaching our pieces down with that same liquid glue. I'm not going to close the door because I am going to want our little teen to be coming out. So I love that about this little build a cabin is that the door opens and closes. It's so cute. And then Next, we will attach down the word yay, because I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted it to be above the congratulations, but I decided I wanted it at the top, so that your eye will go from the upper left hand down to the lower right, and Miles wants to step in. Now, if you're on social media, you may have seen that I posted a paw print the other day. Miles walked through my my spray box and it had those distress oxides which dry but they don't completely on certain surfaces they will rub away so he put his paw right in there and walked across some cardstock. <laughs> 
I'm telling you, he likes the, the box and Max loves paper. <laughs> They're perfect for the craft room. All right, now we're gonna just go ahead and attach down the rest of our little pieces here to the front. And once that's on there, that's gonna take care of this panel. Now we're gonna to move to the card base, which was cut down to five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and scored at four and a quarter. So it's gonna be a side folding, a two size card. And then I do have these leftover pieces from when I trimmed down the panel. So I like to use those two. I save all of those. And I figured with this one, it would be kind of fun to trim it down to half inch pieces. And then we are just going to attach these to the left and right hand side of the inside of the card. It'll frame it up pretty nicely. I love doing that. And it gives you all this room to write. Before I attach anything else down, I did decide I wanted to stamp another sentiment. Such excellent news. So clever, love those puns. And then I'll start attaching down the rest of my pieces on the inside of the card. I have lots of stamped images. That's one of the things I love about Heffy Doodle is that the images aren't huge, so it doesn't take a lot of effort to just color a bunch more. And then you can decide what you wanna to do to the outside and the inside. I end up you know, using a lot of the pieces to make a scene on the inside, which is fun, because then you have not only a scene on the outside, but it continues to the inside as well. Now we'll attach down our panel to our card base. And then once that is put on the front there, that's actually gonna do it for this card. I decided not to add any extra embellishments. So there it is. I love how springy it is. I love those Distress Oxide sprayed all over the back and all of those fun little chickens and just how sweet this is. So if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.